putting their life savings away, to deliberately shitting themselves on stream and crashing what? their cars for views. These are the idiotic streamers who ruin, who ruin their lives for views, beginning with City and OP. Zillion OP was one of the fastest growing Twitch streamers back in 2012, streaming games every day. He gained popularity by portraying himself as a disabled individual. Oh, disabled. He looked at his viewers oh car strings, garnering support yo, yo, for his physical died. condition. My whole stream knew that I was going through physical therapy. No one knew the extent of my recovery. I was in a wheelchair for two years. I was in a car accident. Okay. Uh, which put me in a wheelchair. Viewers rallied, even contributing funds for a new wheelchair and a heartwarming display of love for the guy. However, the narrative took an unexpected turn when during a live stream, Zillion OP shockingly stood up and walked off screen, shattering Whoa. the illusion. The revelation left his audience in disbelief, Whoa. realizing the disability they had empathized with was a charade. <laughs> Following the exposure, Zillion OP disappeared ah. from the internet. His Twitch account was removed, and while many called him out, more people just saw this as an absolute joke. These things happen, guys. Sometimes you forget to be disabled. It happens to the best of us and although he would come back a few years later to admit the deception and i think i should have been open about the recovery from day one my wheelchair is part of my stream and it's something where people see me do wheelies and something people see me stuck in i should 100 percent have been like hey guys today at physical therapy I walked two steps. The damage was irreversible. The streamer's attempt to explain himself fell on deaf ears. The reality is that Zillion OP saga serves as a glaring example of the intense pressures and incentives that drive streamers to push the boundaries of sanity. Imagine this whole time Popo was like, he, he, imagine Popo could do this and run his little ass on, bro. For views. In his case, the idea of an ever-growing audience that loved him because he was friend. in a wheelchair meant he had to keep that persona on. He felt his online persona was identified by his disability, and so he pretty much mocked the truly disabled and pretended to need something millions wish they could escape from, all for a couple of views. This demand for attention by creating illusions for content becomes a dangerous cycle and says a lot about humanity. But that was nothing compared to the next person on our list. You see, as streamers witness the success of their peers and capturing viral moments, they feel compelled to outdo one another. This race for the craziest stunts can inadvertently lead to the normalization of extreme behavior. For instance, popular streamers like XQC and Drake the Rapper have gone live on Twitch as they gamble millions of dollars. Good fucking win. Two point four, two point four mil. Boom! Retrig one more time. Oh my. Oh, God damn. You, sir. Look at that screen. Jesus Whoa. Christ. I mean, I'm not gonna click it, man. Okay. You, you, like... Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, Often tipping viewers in the chats along the way, but some streamers going so extreme that they lose millions online for their audience. Like Trainwreck TV, who lost over $10 million in one stream. But one gambling the streamer that stands above them all is Austin07, otherwise known as Bossman Jack. He started streaming back in 2019 and his channel gained popularity with the boost of the streaming server's kick. Unfortunately, Austin is a gambling addict who has slowly gambled his life away in front of his viewers. So view? Even worse is that quite often he'd do it with other people's money. Dude, somebody please help me, bro. Dude, somebody please can help me, bro. I know one of y'all can help me, bro. If we go back to 2014, Austin found himself entangled in a criminal case that almost resulted in a felony. According to the arrest report, on August 30th, 2014, Austin, along with two accomplices, broke into cars in the Berkshire area of New Kent, Virginia. The trio made off with coins, credit cards, and various items. The charges include grand larceny, credit card theft, tampering with a vehicle, and petty larceny. In 2015, Austin pleaded guilty to the lesser charges and agreed to pay Niggas a scammer in real life and on the internet, imagine? <laughs> A restitution, leading to the dropping of the felony grand larceny charge. This was prior to his gambling addiction, but it showed a bit of who he would become. By 2020, Austin was known as a debt streamer, borrowing gold from his audience and losing it in gambling chores. Oh my fucking god, dude! What the fuck is this? This risky behavior, a form of light gambling, became a staple of his streams. But things would take a much darker turn in 2022. During the Twitch gambling boom, Austin 07 transitioned to real life money gambling. Clips surfaced of him winning big, but the streak was short-lived. In true gambling fashion, he found himself losing significant amounts, leading to meltdowns that showcased his intense frustration and self-loathing. I just lost everything. Have a good day, everybody. Wow. I cannot fucking believe that. Wow. <laughs> At the same time, he was also known for being a coke addict and using other drugs. What? And as the drugs made his behavior more unpredictable, the same couldn't be said for his streams. Every time it was the same thing. Short-lived sessions, losing everything, emotional breakdowns, and the cycle repeating. 
His desperate pleas for financial help from his audience became a recurring theme. Somebody help me, man, please. Please, guys. Somebody please help me, dude. I know one, there's one person out of 93 viewers that can help me, man. Please. Please, dude. Please, guys. Please, 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 man. Please. Highlighting the destructive nature of his gambling addiction, he was putting himself into heavy debt and letting his viewers watch him do it. While you may say it was gambling that was his issue, Austin clearly loved getting the attention along with his downfall. Something was clear though, and that's that his viewers were only enticed and more excited for his freakout moments as he lost everything. Which once again points to what people would do for views, but also reveals a greater problem. The spotlight shifts to the audience appetite for the sensational and the tragic. Austin's viewers were not just passive observers, they actively participated in the cycle of his highs and lows. The more he struggled, the more attention he received, creating a perverse incentive for the streamer and his destructive behavior. Which casts this shadow on a much broader issue with online content consumption. It raises ethical concerns about the glorification of personal struggles and the intersection of entertainment with genuine human suffering. The fact y'all niggas do love when a nigga suffer. Whether it's on a hey y'all 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 are victims of it too. When a nigga's struggling on a game, y'all love watching that motherfucker. Kino's most views ever is when he was struggling fighting Elden Ring boss. That when he was doing good on the when that nigga was struggling, struggling on the 700th death on like fucking Mog, bro. You feel me? When Samson was on his 1,000th death on the last boss, bruh. And that viewers find excitement and entertainment in someone's lowest moments reflects a very dystopian part of internet culture. An agent was going clinically insane and only up, bruh. My man's hit 20 something thousand. Yes, Samson got like 1,007 deaths on one boss. Yes. Culture. But before we continue, I want to tell you about our video sponsor Raycons. I've been using the Raycon Everyday Earbuds for a while now, and they've been perfect for any time I take a hike or go to the gym. Not only do they fit my ear but aside from a person ruining their life behind a camera, streamers have also pushed their limits and done their best to blur the lines of what's okay and what's not I've seen a bitch literally finger blast her asshole on camera and get a three day and what's not okay to do on these streams. One particular issue that's popped up over the years on Twitch specifically is the idea of Twitch thoughts. The Urban Dictionary defines Twitch thought as a girl that is using Twitch TV as a nearby adult entertainment website to get donations from young boys. The girl is fully aware of what she's doing, but if someone calls her out, she's always going to defend herself by saying that someone is sexist. Now there's a major debate surrounding Twitch thoughts, and whether the gaming community is being sexist or if certain female streamers are indeed pushing the boundaries with their content. Some argue that a growing market on Twitch involves female streamers not primarily focused on gaming, but on luring in viewers with overly sexual behavior, relying on donations and subscriptions with minimal gaming related content. While wearing very revealing clothing, Mamino! they do certain things to entice the audience even more, like stretching, bending over to adjust the what webcam, the twerking, and engaging in various poses with a focus on cleavage and buttocks. But part of the issue is that Twitch seems to have a double standard. Male streamers who sarcastically reenact similar poses often face some hefty consequences. With a major uproar from the Twitch community, they have changed some guidelines on what is allowed. Loud. One streamer who consistently takes this to the next level is Alan Izzy, who has done multiple questionable things for the views and donations over the years. Alan Izzy is a prominent Canadian Twitch streamer known for her content primarily centered around gaming and lifestyle. She has over 1.4 million. The fuck? A streamer known for her content primarily centered around gaming and lifestyle. I ain't know about these. So, she has over 1.4 million followers on Twitch, and for most of her streams, she'll be playing some popular game. However, her time as a streamer has been littered with controversies, from copy striking PewDiePie's YouTube channel to being toxic towards her fanbase and those who don't like her. Yet some things she's done on stream have been far more extreme than others. Going back to 2020, in the middle of one of her streams, Alan Izzy had a wardrobe malfunction. She was placing a pillow under her shirt and revealed her entire left boob, something that has caused perma bans before, and yet Twitch initially ignored the situation, and only after many asked for her to be banned, she would only receive a one day ban. This moment only gave Alan Izzy more attention, and her sub count went up when she started streaming again. The audience wanted more. Controversial actions often attracted attention, as people are more likely to share and discuss content that elicits strong emotions. Other things she's done on stream aside from her 
overly sexualized behaviors as abuse her cats repeatedly on stream. See, Alan and C thought it would be funny to give her cat vodka in front of her audience so they could see the cat's reaction. Perhaps it was ignorance, but cats can't really tolerate ingesting alcohol and can easily be poisoned by it. This was one of multiple occasions where she would abuse her cat on stream. She always thought it was funny and that her audience would love it. Though, after some backlash, we don't see cats in her room in her streams anymore. But one thing this made clear is that she would do anything to get more views, as just a few months ago, she was banned. One thing this made clear is that she would do anything to get more views. Hey man. If dresses gonna fuck a nigga up, I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? That's a fire dress, Salinity, I ain't gonna lie. She look good. Just look good. That's just a few. Okay. A few months ago, she was banned again for twerking on stream. And this degenerate behavior is how she grabs her audience. What the fuck? Ago, she was. Josh is what? What you said? Josh is the problem. <laughs> Here's the thing with you freak ass niggas. You never see me follow or watch none of these, you know what I'm saying, on my own time. If there's a clip in my face, there's a clip in my face. I ain't never gonna donate. I ain't never gonna give him a view. I ain't never gonna sub. I ain't never gonna, you know what I'm saying? It's you, lame ass niggas. Freak ass boys. Banned again for tweet clears would love it. Though, after some backlash, we don't see cats in her room in her streams anymore. But one thing this made clear is that she would do anything to get more views. As just a few months ago, she was banned again for twerking on stream. And this degenerate behavior. is how she grabs her audience attention. Her entire job is based on being a complete degenerate piece of filth, but at least the audience in this case has the decision to watch it, something this next streamer doesn't do. And her name is Bad Bunny. You see, these streamers will go oh, to extremes shit. just to- I've seen Destiny beefing with this one. I've I seen, I seen a YouTube clip Destiny beefing with this bit get more views and it's about more than just people watching for some it's Bad really buddy. about feeling like you're worth something as they feel their value lies behind those who watch them and so they will do anything even evil things that, just that, to get more views that, but more often than not the issue is usually greed I like subscribers scumbag, and views bro. come with a natural oh, this, oh it's just also it's the same person that was like if you're in my chat, why are you not sub? You fucking worthless fox, or whatever the fuck she said. Are you? And the behaviors of certain streamers who resort to extreme tactics always want to boost their viewership so that they can get more donations, sponsors, ad revenue, and anything to drop a couple more pennies in their pockets. And Bad Bunny did this to the extreme. Now, Bad Bunny has done many, many things that have gotten her in trouble over the years. She started her Twitch career dressing provocatively on stream to grow her audience, and was temporarily banned for mistakenly exposing herself at one point. But she's also slowly turned into an extreme left a streamer who ran a political talk show with the hopes of trying to start her own version of the Ben Shapiro show on the other side of the political spectrum. Her typical stream is breaking down political situations and because of her extreme stances and certain issues, she's been banned on Twitch again for saying some deemed hateful things. On the surface, Bad Bunny is just standing up for what she believes in and if you take a look at her socials and most of her streams, she's been a major advocate for anything that gives her virtue signaling points. Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ stuff, anything, the list goes on. And while she did manage to grab a solid audience from doing this, she was very frustrated that none of them were subbing to her channel or making any donations. <laughs> Please give me fucking money. Like, I get that people have financial issues, but like, I don't believe that half of my fucking viewership is all suffering from crippling financial issues while also having hours upon hours every single day of time. Let me tell you about these streamers, bro. All the, most all these streamers are scumbags, bro. All right, none of these motherfuckers is good people. You think all these political streamers are good people because they're fighting for the right? No, they're just, most of them are just virtue signal, signaling fucking losers in real life. Like, bro, they know what they're doing. They know what they're fucking doing. You know what I'm saying? These niggas are not good people. Like, they're not, bro. Just like everybody fucking else, bro. That they can spend watching Twitch. In fact, Bad Bunny straight up called her audience poor and even banned one of her viewers who called her out on her verbal abuse and expectations. How did my whole speech about how I need subs to get the stream going if you like the content, blah, blah, blah? How that results in zero subs? There are regulars here. Five dollars a month. How are you have hours of time to watch me <laughs> and not five dollars? I don't know. What are you doing with your life where you have hours of time to watch Twitch and not five dollars to provide for the content that you're watching? Because it's like people just really have no, they really don't respect me as a content creator. So much for being left wing. The situation then. Yo, go upload a YouTube video or some shit, motherfucker. She's not wrong, though. I mean, shit. You don't know the situations of people watching, bro. Like, at the end of the day, if you got it, then thank you. 
sub. Do whatever the fuck you need. If you don't, then shit. You feel me? But went and escalated with YouTubers like Moist Critical exposing Bad Bunny's greedy tactics as she was given the title of the greediest streamer on Twitch. An ironic title for an <laughs> She not wrong, yo. The subs on your ass. <laughs> HS, she not wrong, so she not wrong. <laughs> streamed after his political talk show host. And after some digging, she was also dubbed the most hypocritical Twitch streamer because she wouldn't practice what she preached. Not only would she make homophobic comments in her private chats, she'd also use the N word and call a gay black person gross. Even black people, if you found me a black bisexual man, I might throw up in my mouth. It's oh, yeah, she hates black dudes in like a sexual way. Yeah, she would never date a black guy. Yeah, she should never date a black guy. That was one big thing. Yeah, I remember that shit. It's clear that she was only ever streaming as a way to make money off of her viewers and nothing else. She's not the only streamer to go on a run to mock fans for being too poor to donate. Because I'm not asking you for a large financial contribution. But a sub is $5. And it doesn't matter how broke you are, if you have time to watch Twitch... You're so goddamn broke, you're online begging for niggas to fucking sub to you, nigga. I don't want to hear shit about broke for people begging for shit. Like, shut your ass up, nigga. You know, I say, fuck out of here. You have, you have $10, truly. If you don't have $10, you probably don't have time to watch Twitch because you should be working. You should be trying. You should be working. <laughs> you should be working, man. What the fuck? To earn money. Oh, God, if you had a great revenue stream and you were just having a hell of money, you wouldn't be saying this right now. If you were well off, you wouldn't care. You wouldn't be saying this, bro. You say this because you're fucking struggling, bitch. Uh, it's not a ton. It's not like a ton of money. So being like, I'm broke, I can't afford to sub, it, that doesn't really track. What you mean to say is, I'm so irresponsible with my money, I can't support the entertainment that I enjoy. When streaming platforms like Twitch and YouTube were created, there was no focus on making money. It was only after a couple of years of the platforms thriving that they opened their doors for the creators to make money. Which is why there's so much nostalgia for those who watched streamers when it first took off. They were being genuine, they weren't worried about how much money they would make from the video, because there was no money to be made. It wasn't a job, it was a hobby, and the people genuinely loved it. But now, about 75% of kids under age 18 will want to become professional streamers or YouTubers. Their primary motivation for this is that they see how much streamers make and they want a slice of the pie. And this emphasis on monetization has overshadowed the original ideas of platforms like Twitch, which was to provide entertaining and engaging content. The streamers driven by an opportunity of wealth and attention has led to the degeneration of the streaming experience. Whilst we've seen streamers ruin their life on the stream already, something else we see now is how the audience love to feast on people in the lowest points of their life. Like FoosyTube, who literally lost his mind and got himself arrested on stream. Now, FoosyTube's journey on YouTube has had a lot of ups and downs. He first found fame making prank videos on YouTube, but as the prank period of YouTube came to an end, FoosyTube eventually found himself broke and struggling to adapt. He started making less money and getting way less views, a situation he didn't know how to deal with. By 2015, FoosyTube turned to vlogs and motivational videos and started his own streaming channel on Twitch. An average 100,000 views per YouTube video, he was still unsatisfied, and he couldn't afford his exorbitant lifestyle. According to Fusi himself, he went from having $200,000 a month to less than $10,000 a month, which is still a lot of money, but for someone like Fusi Tube, this wasn't enough. And with this, his mental health was steadily declining, and he started to have unpredictable outbursts on stream. Then in July 2018, in an attempt to save his career, Fusi Tube wanted to create a major creator event, which ultimately led to a dramatic failure. As FoosyTube promised his viewers and anybody who came to the event that they'd be met with big names like Drake and Snoop Dogg. The event was going to be called Hate Dies Li- I remember this bullshit. <laughs> 10k a month broke? Um, it's just that it's not broke. It's not broke. But I don't know what his lifestyle is. But if you were making $200,000 a month, you probably did shit and bought shit that would require for you to keep up that type of fucking revenue. So when you go th from that to make it 10k, yeah, you're struggling. Cause now 10k is the price of your fucking mortgage a month, my nigga, and you're fucked. <laughs> Love arrives and was actually promoted by Logan Paul, Roman Atwood, and Kimstar. But ultimately, the event was a disaster, and FoosyTube's promises and hype were never met. It took an even deeper dive from the original plan when FoosyTube got somebody to call in a bomb threat, shutting the entire thing down. Fusi did this so that he could move the event bullshit. to the parking lot, where he could give a batshit insane speech, talking about how he wanted to unalive himself. I have bipolar and depression. That what you put into my head made me want to kill myself. 
Thankfully, this led to FuzzyTube taking a break from the internet to work on himself, and it seemed to help. He disappeared for a solid year and he seemed a lot more happy on his return. He wasn't uploading as many videos and popped up in a few interviews, but his presence died down for the most part, but this would all change in 2021. While he continued to make YouTube videos, he started streaming on Twitch a whole lot more. Whether he was sleeping, driving or eating, it was all on camera. He claimed that he was in a better place mentally now, and that his audience no longer had to worry about him. But as soon as the views started coming in again, viewers would start to notice old manic state Dude, habits. Crazy, there was a bit of a question of whether he was doing this for the camera or because he was slowly losing himself. Either way it worked, as by 2023, he had over 29,000 Twitch viewers and 300,000 followers. He would then hit a real high as he was approached by Kick and signed a $15 million streamer deal. This was life changing, it meant that Fousey had the freedom he'd been pushing for. So he started running a 24 7 stream of his life to make the most of his virality. He would head off camera while going to the toilet or showering, but pretty much viewers could watch every moment of Fousey's life. As his viewers only increased, it motivated Fousey Tube to do even crazier things. His mental health That's was getting insane. worse and worse, but it was all worth it for the stream and the money, according to Fousey. While driving, he'd close his eyes and let go of the wheel for several seconds, doing anything he could to engage his audience. But then he would do the despicable, when he met a drunk woman at an airport back in August 2023. Streaming his conversation with the woman, Fusi would learn she was a victim of human trafficking. And so more and more viewers would tune in to hear her life story as she broke down and cried. She was also clearly drunk at this point and everyone watching felt heartbreak for her. It was an emotionally gripping story of someone who survived human trafficking and was able to tell the tale. But then, all of a sudden, Fusi went off camera for about 10 minutes, and he would return, leaving the woman behind, and start bragging about how he had just banged the woman in the bathroom. I just joined the Mile High Club. And I know it doesn't count as the Mile High Club because I was in the airport, but I still joined it. I swear to God, I swear on everything I love. I saw everything I love. I just joined the Maha Club in the airport, in the men's bathroom. When the community was outraged of Fousey taking advantage of her, Fousey then jumped back to his claims, denying it ever happened. But it does make you ask, why would he make the claim in the first place? Well, the answer to that is that Fousey knows his community. He knows they want him to do some of the most disturbing things on stream. He understands that his horrifying actions are way more entertaining than when he does something good on stream. It's a parasitic relationship where the audience feeds off the struggles of the creator. And it becomes a cycle, as the more extreme situations Fousey puts himself in, the more views come in, and thus the more more money and clout, and so he feels he always needs to have these moments in hopes that the viewers keep watching him. And this momentum would keep building and building up until August 23rd, as Fusi reached his breaking point. Over the day, he physically assaulted two people and entered a manic state. You can see him unable to handle the situation mentally, and he becomes dangerous to those around him. All the while, this was the big spectacle. His live viewers skyrocketed. He'd gained all the views he'd ever wanted, but now his brain was so muddled, he couldn't appreciate it. As over the day, a troll would keep calling and harassing Fusi, making him believe that his family was in danger and that Fusi himself was in danger. And by the end of the day, Fusi called the cops. There's a gun to my head right now. There's a gun to my head. Help, ma'am, 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 he left. Ma'am, he left. There's a gun to my head. Help, help, get them. Help, bye. Ma'am, intercontinental, what's my room number? Help, tell me, 2027. The police eventually came and arrested Fusi, who was clearly in an uncontrollable state, after being detained by police and sent to a mental health facility. And we can only hope that he's taken that moment seriously and plans to step back down from stardom, but it's even harder to do now when his $15 million kick deal is on. But the real question is why do people keep on watching this? And how many other Fusis are there going to be in the coming years? It's our innate need for parasocial relationships and dopamine at all costs that's driving this mental illness factory that we call streaming. And we could see this so clearly with a World of Warcraft streamer called Plump Rump Stum, an overly obese streamer who Jesus sits on stream Christ. for hours at a time, taking edibles, getting high and gaming. It seems like the streamer just based his entire personality on the World of Warcraft streamer from South Park, even wearing exactly the same shirt in all of his streams. And whilst he did manage to pull in a couple hundred <laughs> consistent viewers, he'd reach his peak viewership after taking a lesson from Eric Cartman when he defecated on screen right after a hardcore classic death. He didn't even end the stream and just carried on as if he didn't have a pile of shit in his pants. It wasn't a mistake moment that he couldn't handle, and he would even post the video separately on Twitch with the title Streamer Shits Himself, seemingly doing this deliberately just to gather enough attention to fuel his ego, and the video quickly garnered attention with over 70,000 views. But is publicly shitting yourself really worth 70,000 views? Well to him, it definitely was. As a couple months later, he did it all over again. And believe it or not, he isn't the only Twitch creator to do such a thing on stream. And now today, because of this, his channel is more popular. 
I don't shit myself. I just fart, you dumbass niggas. I don't be shitting myself, idiot. ...than ever. And if anything, this just shows how toxic these Twitch viewers really are. While Twitch has been a space for diverse content and personalities, instances like these raise concerns about the direction of online communities and the potential toxicity within the audience. People just want to feel some sort of emotion these days, no matter how degenerate the content they're watching is. That's why if you open Twitch today, you'll probably find some half-naked girls in hot tubs on the front page. More and more streaming platforms like Twitch foster a toxic culture that rewards degenerate behavior over actual entertainment, which only incentivizes more and more streamers to push the boundaries to maintain viewership. And this is why we now have people streaming themselves doing illegal things on a regular basis. Like this streamer named Odio Rojas, who captured the public's attention through a reckless and dangerous act as he sped through traffic at an alarming speed, reaching 116 miles per hour. With the live video abruptly ending, when Olio Rojas crashed into a garbage truck after he lost control on his Honda. The impact caused his vehicle to spin into concrete, and the streamer injured himself very badly, as he would be hospitalized for a very long time. And it makes you wonder, how far is this cycle gonna go? How far are people gonna go for views in the future? Only time will tell. Hey man, I sit at my desktop and I chill. Every single year we get a new-